A Southwest Asian country, Iran, formerly known as Persia, is one of the oldest civilizations of the world. Iranians are relatively a new community in Canada, and one that is growing. My guest, Professor Sam Shah Sahabi, will throw some light on the Iranian community in Thunder Bay, and will also talk about his own creative pursuits. Welcome, uh, Sam, to our studios, and I am delighted to meet you. Thank you very much. Um, because you're my first Iranian <laughs> guest <laughs> on the show. Excellent. So thank you so much for coming. Thanks uh, for coming. inviting me. Yeah. So, uh, Sam, we daily want to know about your, your beautiful country. Well, uh, Iran, uh, as you know, it's situated in uh, I the area, it's fam famous as Middle East. Uh, it's uh, about uh, 81 million uh, population in there, and geographically, it's one of the, uh, I believe it's the second largest country in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has, as you mentioned, very rich history, uh, that area, Middle East, it's uh, famous as cradle of civilization mm -hmm. with uh, many old cultures settl settling there because of the many rivers going through the region and creating uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, irrigation for farming and kind of cultivating land in some of the oldest uh, town registered uh, up to around 15,000 years. Uh, settled there in the areas that is now famous or kind of recognizes Syria, th Turkey, okay. Iraq, and Iran. Uh, and uh, one of the, uh, I guess, mm, a starting point for uh, Persian cultures would be uh, the uh, Kurosh. Uh, which established Achaemenid Empire. Uh, this uh, empire up to this day is one of the largest uh, historical footprints uh, uh, as any other comparable to any other empire. And uh, it uh, kind of uh, encompassed the areas in south, west, uh, south uh, of Europe all the way to uh, potentially close to where it is now, India. Right. And where did you grow up in <laughs> Iran? I grew up in Tehran, the capital Tehran, city the capital. of uh, okay. Tehran. And uh, uh, I grew up in a kind of a middle, a middle class uh, family. Uh, uh, my uh, father, a banking person, and my uh, mother, a publishing poet, an artist herself, and also a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Tehran. It's a beautiful uh, capital city. Beautiful. It's one of the largest in the Middle East too, uh, among the three large capital mm -hmm. cities. Uh, and oh, it has three capitals. Absolutely. Uh, well, it's a political and also uh, the, uh, the capital city, and it's also political uh, uh, place for as a capital city. So all the parliament, all the government uh, buildings, everything's in Tehran. Um, it has about eight to nine million yeah. uh, population, and with the greater metropolitan area, it reaches to about 15, 16 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, very interesting traffic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, same as us. Same as us in India. Yes. <laughs> in South Asia. Um, when did the relocation happen? When did you immigrate to Canada? Well, uh, I came to Canada in 1997, uh, about 20 some years ago. So uh, much, much later, much, much yeah, after the uh, Iran-Iraq war. The absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, the 80s, 1980s. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, I generally uh, decided to move out of Iran because of uh, the mm, political situations uh, for the artist in uh, the growth of uh, my practice uh, at the time in 90s. Uh, we're talking about 90s these days. Iran is so much different country, right. but uh, at the time uh, I had hard time uh, sometimes exhibiting my work, and uh, also I all as like any young person uh, in my field uh, always eyeballed uh, the larger market uh, and I was thinking about if I uh, educate myself elsewhere uh, 
uh, I may have better chance to Sweet. continue as an artist. And uh, I had this uh, family background, relationship uh, with Canada, and decided to come to Canada in 97. So was the 1980 um, revolution wasn't was that an influencing factor as well? Uh, the oppression, of somewhat, uh, and somewhat, absolutely. Uh, I guess. Uh, well, Iran is a country that always been, uh, because of its rich natural uh, resources uh, and its geographical location, has been meddled by uh, different uh, uh, foreign powers. And uh, there was always, ha uh, there has been uh, rejections by Iranians towards uh, influence from outside of Iran. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the recent history, since uh, the Anglo-American coup in 1953, which toppled down the people elected government of Mohammed Mossadegh, Mehdi Mossadegh, sorry, um, uh, this has been always back of mind of mm -hmm. people to uh, relinquish the, uh, uh, this uh, Oppression foreign of or, uh, okay. kind of influence and have something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in uh, 1978, when the uh, first, uh, I guess, uh, uh, popular uprising started, it was against the kingdom at the time. It was a grassroots moment. It was, and, it, uh, and of course it took about three to four years till it was slowly kind of, as is famous outside of Iran, hijacked by mm -hmm. certain political factors. And after that, it was a little bit harder, much, well, I would say much harder in the first 10 years mm -hmm. to live in, in, uh, in Iran. And of course, uh, mm -hmm. right after revolution, pretty much in the first few years, right after that, we got uh, kind of pulled into this war between Iran and Iraq, which mm -hmm. lasted eight years. 1980 to 88. Yes, and... Uh, that impacted in everybody. Absolutely yeah. impacted uh, the whole region mm -hmm. as... Uh, Socially, culturally, religious, political. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and forced many young people to uh, move or try, attempt to uh, leave Iran. Uh, and at the time, it was a very hard time mm -hmm. uh, to kind of concentrate on anything. Mm -hmm. Of course, when your country is torn apart Absolutely. by war, yeah. and uh, you have no other choices to either just uh, accept exist, the situation, accept yeah. the situation, and or try to new avenues. Yeah, exactly. On that note, uh, Sam, we'll take a very short break, okay. and uh, I want to hear a lot more sure. about uh, your work. And, and your transition time in, in Canada. Okay, thank you. Dear viewers, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching Asian Vibes. And my guest today is Professor Sam. Is that the right way I'm pronouncing Absolutely, your name? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Was it uh, a short form of something? Uh, well, uh, my uh, Farsi name is Sam. Uh, but to make okay. it easy on everybody, I <laughs> went <laughs> with Sam, and it is actually historically the same root for s uh, the name Samuel and Samantha. Oh, Sam. Nice. And yeah. what does it mean? What does Sam uh, mean? It's, uh, it's c it comes from the book of uh, King, uh, Kings, a, uh, written by a Persian poet, Ferdowsi. Sam is one of the heroes uh, mm -hmm. in this book, and it's one of the protector of the land. So do you speak Farsi? Absolutely, Persian, yeah? yeah. I'm fluent in Farsi, and I know a little bit of Arabic, and of course English. Writing and everything. <laughs> yes. Boy, what do you think about the next generation? How much are we connected with the, the our, our um, native languages? Well, if, uh, if you're talking about the generation uh, growing up in Canada, it would be a little bit different. I know in the larger centers like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, we have uh, I Iranian schools that they kind of uh, s follow the same methods, mm -hmm. and kids at the young age there can are go there. Schools? Yes, Iranian absolutely, schools? yes. Okay. But uh, in our town, uh, no. Uh, 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 but we have a growing population of Iranian. Uh, that are coming to town, either whether to settle down as new settler or continue the education at Lakehead University. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that for a fact that in the past couple of years, 
we have about 60, 70 new uh, uh, students coming to students. continue their education in the uh, science, engineering department, oh, business. Nice. Absolutely, it's Amazing. a growing uh, population. And professors too. There's, there's a Absolutely. big academic uh, uh, yes. community as yes. well. Yes, uh, I don't have the exact number, but, but whenever we get together, I can tell you, like every year there's more and more. At this point, I believe we are around 10 uh, professors working Ten at families, Lakehead universities okay. mm -hmm. uh, uh, at different departments. So when, what do you teach at uh, Lakehead University? And uh, when I did you move to Thunder Bay? Or was it the job that brought you to Thunder Bay? Good question. Uh, I, I came in 2009. Uh, yeah. uh, of course, uh, I, I, uh, there was a job opening at Lakehead University Department of Visual Arts and I applied for it and it got shortlisted and came to town and walking just kind of around town I just loved it mm. and I remember uh, they uh, when they were interviewing me they also at the end they toured me around and they took me to the high street and I was just looking at <laughs> the uh, the beautiful Lake Superior Aww. and it kind of remind me of the Caspian Sea and I just imme immediately thought oh god just please Please help Please me to get this job. <laughs> I want to be here. <laughs> Everybody falls in love with Thunder Bay uh, when I'm seeing the Lake Superior, absolutely. which is very true. It's something to be near or that body of water. Exactly. I think it brings peace and, calm and longevity serenity. and kind of exactly that calm and uh, there is something about it for sure. Mm -hmm. So what do you teach? I teach painting and drawing and I supervise our graduating class. Uh, and this has been my uh, goal uh, in work uh, in the past nine years mm -hmm. here in Thunder Bay. Uh, uh, the the community is very vibrant. The art community is very uh, strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, although we have a smaller venues, mm -hmm. but uh, we're always creative with those small venues. The Thunder Bay Art Gallery has been a huge yeah. benefactor for our departments. We exhibit our uh, student exhibitions every year. Very and prolific. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And, and embraces all kinds of cultural uh, diversity absolutely, of paintings. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And they're very active in that area. And yeah. uh, we have also Artist Run Gallery, uh, definitely superior uh, Artist Run Gallery, which is award-winning uh, gallery and they are very active mm -hmm. they, uh, and we always uh, collaborate with them mm -hmm. to expose our students artworks and uh, maybe a testimonial or a strength for our departments that many of our art uh, organizations are now running by our former nice. graduates oh in nice. Thunder Bay which I makes me very excited. Uh, graduates. Yeah absolutely. Nice. Um, uh, Sam, can you tell us a little bit about your paintings? I, there are <laughs> such, that's, that's a very beautiful, bright, vibrant painting out there. And there's one here right behind me. Absolutely. Well, uh, I can uh, start maybe... Medium. I want to know what the medium is. It's sure. These are the newest uh, series of work that I started. Uh, and uh, thanks to generous support from uh, Ontario Art Council that funded the project. Uh, these are uh, my attempt to uh, create mirror-like uh, surface. So audience, uh, when they come to my uh, exhibitions, can see the reflections in the work oh. and be part of the work, basically. S and also borrowing some of the elements from Persian motifs uh, and uh, sacred geometry, mm -hmm. which has so much to do with uh, individual health and also individual health moves that society to be healthier per, uh, society. Mm -hmm. And also uh, most of the work is done on copper, which has uh, proven healing property. And in most of old cultures, well, if you look at what they uh, f used the mostly, it's, yeah, yeah, uh, it's copper and copper-like oh, uh, okay. um, soft metals. So uh, this is uh, basically s uh, one sample of these new series of work mm -hmm. that I started. Um, I try to kind of have this marriage of abstract and uh, form and figure mm -hmm. all together. So there is a hint of 
uh, uh, kind of modern abstracts, absolutely, and traditional, and, uh, and what like we're close again, coming back to the Lake Superior water uh -huh, okay. and flying over the water, <laughs> seeing that uh, kind of what water does, and it kind of finds its way, carves the land in uh -huh. a different way, and on top we have this uh, symmetrical kind of attempt to break down that uh, abstraction of the landscape and kind of bring some uh, vibrant concentration in and around the composition. Mm -hmm. This is another work uh, mm -hmm. of the same series. It's uh, I work on the smaller size. Is uh, there a work theme too. that you like to follow? It's very floral. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of going back to some of the roots, uh, like the of uh, Persian art and Persian paintings, and I'm trying to relocate them and find a uh, happy kind of. Uh, binding between my subject matter and uh, my work, which uh, despite all this, at least in this new series, they have uh, a strong political uh, background into mm -hmm. them. And some of my own personal quest to uh, kind of uh, making art to make sense of where is home mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is uh, one of the three, it is like this is a triptych okay. actually mm -hmm. work which has uh, kind of, this is the above and there is the uh, below and a space in between mm -hmm. which comes to the piece that has the home in between oh the two pieces. That is <laughs> such a poignant <laughs> thought uh, Sam. Thank On that you. note, um, I'm, we'll just take a very, very short break. Sure. We'll be right back and I want to talk to you uh, about your catalog. Absolutely. And uh, some of the other projects that you're doing right now. Absolutely. And uh, the awards, I, I understand you've <laughs> got, uh, you've been recognized uh, at several platforms. Okay, thank so you. So dear viewers, stay tuned. We will continue our discussions and talks with Sam and get to know more about his work. Welcome back viewers. We're talking to Sam about his painting and him finding his home. And likewise, we are all trying to find our happy places, Sam. Absolutely. And, and I wanted to know what are the influences? What has influenced your paintings? I see your roots there. I see where you are now. So what other factors have influenced well, you? Well, uh, some years back uh, when I was uh, continuing my education at York University, I was trying to make sense of my uh, new place and kind of figure out where uh, I'm heading in. Uh, as you know, Iran is a uh, culture and country of poetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, in my quest, I start looking at Rumi and uh, Rumi's influence on... 13th century poet. Absolutely, a, on rebirth and, uh, uh, and kind of finding a personal quest through love or love of what you do to change yourself and hopefully uh, change your society. So uh, th that kind of undertone uh, uh, existed in series of work that I created. It's called Being There and it had seven, uh, three volumes and it took me about seven years to uh, complete it. And, uh, Volume of painting? Absolutely. Oh, there wow. is uh, I do uh, like uh, one thing that I m miss, and maybe uh, we can uh, put it in the p photographs. It's also I do installation work, a sculptural piece, and motorized oh, uh, okay. recycle uh, materials and stuff like that. I thought I think I saw some of those work in uh, your absolutely. catalog. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's a body uh, of work. Yeah, this is the catalog uh, of uh, the show that I had in Thunder Bay Art Gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, the show uh, under title War and Deception, uh, which uh, kind of started for me in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Arab uprising mm -hmm. and uh, the turmoil in the region of Middle East and the effect of media on mm -hmm. uh, creating potential deception or diverting the attention of mm -hmm. the mass popu uh, population mm -hmm. of somewhere else and not paying attention to what it is. It's an interesting catalog because mm -hmm. it uh, consists of a series of question and answer by uh, Dr. Nadia Kord, the curator of Thunder Bay Art Gallery at the time, and uh, kind of goes it through 
different segments of the, the show and different um, ideas behind mm -hmm. each installation or the painting in mm -hmm. the work. The painting behind you, mm -hmm. it's one of the uh, works for this series of, that series of War and Deception. Uh, this particular painting is called Warp and it's about uh, Iraq and yeah. invasion of Iraq and and uh, this quest of uh, what happens to a country when it falls apart mm. and in the middle uh, there is a text kind of faintly pointing at mm. agreeable number of missing Iraqi people which is coming to very close to 900,000. These are the people, nobody knows what happened to them. And it's not the number of people that are actually killed or displaced or had to be uh, taking refuge elsewhere. Which uh, is missing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I try to create one painting for each country that went through the turmoil. One of yeah. the largest ones I made uh, for Iran which is the largest painting I ever done. It's about eight feet by 12 feet. And it is in the catalog and it was in the show. And uh, th the most uh, recent one uh, was uh, the painting that I did for Syria in this series of war and deception. And in this particular series. Yeah. Beautiful dedication, Sam. Thank very, you. very beautiful. Thank and um, I understand you've also been recognized for, for your work. Yeah. Yeah, uh, th uh, t uh, t thankfully uh, the city is very excited and v uh, vibrant and they mm, pay, uh, th uh, they awarded me on 2015, 2015. Uh, the Thunderbird uh, Cultural Educator Awards and I'm very pleased and excited for that and uh, I have been shortlisted for uh, Hunter Awards, uh, which is amazing for any visual artist to be even shortlisted for mm -hmm. that in mm -hmm. 2016. I, um, I'm uh, working on a, a new series of work which is beneath the reflection. These are some of the samples that mm -hmm. we have here and the work is still uh, mm -hmm. in progress, um, uh, working on that. Some of the uh, uh, s new works and some older works are in display in Gallery 33, uh, which is another exciting gallery in Thunder Bay Art mm -hmm. Gallery. And, uh, and I'm thankful to be uh, il selected as 25 of the artists that are creating new work for a uh, permanent uh, collection of Thunder Bay Art Gallery. Oh, wow. As you know, Thunder Bay Art Gallery is soon going to ha uh, have, have new, new building. building yes. And uh, for that, because they uh, want to open up with a great exhibition of the new collections, they reach out to 25 regional artists wow. and uh, we are all uh, committed to create new works for this collection which i'm so excited congratulations for. Thank Sam. You. congratulations Thanks. and when when do we get to see these paintings uh, i believe it's uh, uh, the first show that thunder bear art gallery would have in the new building mm -hmm. and i'm not quite sure about the date of when the building's going right. to open up but it is probably around 2020 2020. Yeah. Right. Do you think, Sam, that your paintings or your work, body of work, has evolved with time? Absolutely. Uh, like uh, the, the one thing that I really like about painting, mm -hmm. uh, I'll do. Although I make other kinds of art. Yeah, I too, saw that. Yeah. But uh, I, the one thing I like about painting is that it, it ever evolves, and you can always come sit in front of uh, work of art, especially painting. And as you changing your perception about art, history, your knowledge about the background of who you are changes, your interpretation of that artwork changes too. Mm -hmm. And that's the most exciting about any painting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always excited to go to any museum because oh. I have this preconception about that a specific art exists mm -hmm. in that museum and I run to it and I sit in front of it for a good chunk of minutes and I always see it differently uh, because I'm changed. I, my uh, idea is changing. 
and I'm excited to see that change. So it is change also for the artists too, as we're changing and we're learning and we're challenging ourselves with new medium material and also new subject matters. They all push us around and push us forward. To extend your boundaries. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Sam, very, very impressive, and I wish we had, uh, you know, more time to talk about your, all your work, all your, all your work, um, and uh, Sam, I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you. With all your uh, future uh, um, new creative uh, additions that you can, uh, Thank that you, you plan to do, and you really gave us some uh, very thoughtful insights as to finding that happy place and doing what you like or enjoy doing the most Thank you. and also moving with time and the changes and adapting and embracing anything new that you see around us. Thank you, Thank very you much. so much and I'd like to add this and this was in your signature, your email signature. Yes. Uh, this is a quote by Rumi yes. and it says, let the beauty of what you love be what you do. Excellent. That's exactly Thank right. Thank you, Sam. On that note, dear viewers, this is a wrap. Watch uh, Asian Vibes again in the uh, coming uh, weeks, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.